Hello, this is Mike, nostressmike.com, and uh, I want to talk about uh, bullies, and uh, it, it's funny, uh, uh, th thanks, uh, I'm, I'm getting, getting old now. And uh, uh, one of the things I've noticed, uh, bullies, uh, they're, they were different when I was a, a young school kid. Uh, the bullies were different. And then uh, as I got older, uh, uh, they became even more different uh, when I got in the Marines. Wow, man! Uh, I really found out what bullies were. And uh, that really pushed me forward on handling bullies. When I came back uh, from Vietnam and got out of the Marines, uh, you could really tell I'm, I'm uh, short-tempered with a bully and uh, it got to the point where uh, a bullies uh, would uh, get in bigger groups and uh, they would do more violent stuff. And now this was uh, back in the late 60s, and that, that was the bad racial days. And so uh, the bullies came racially too. <laughs> so, you know, bullies, there's all different kinds of bullies. And uh, I per basically handle bullies the same way. Uh, but. Uh, and then, like I say, owning uh, businesses, and then uh, there'd be people who want to uh, make it difficult for me. And but they, like I say, they didn't understand. I was a little more advanced in bully handling than most people, so uh, I really didn't have any problems uh, in my businesses. When it starts, I'm take care of it real quick. And uh, I was ready for them to uh, start extortion and, uh, you know, demand payments, uh, cash payments, you know, insurance kind of stuff. I was ready for that, <laughs> you know, but I never did. I never did have to face that. Uh, and, uh, and then, like I say, uh, when I was, uh, was training SWAT, I started training SWAT. Let's see, it had been in the 30s or the, the 80s, uh, I'd been uh, 30, oh, 37, something like that maybe. And uh, I was doing uh, hostage rescue was my specialty. And uh, right there, now then again, uh, people that take hostages are bullies. And so then I was, uh, I, I love, working over bullies and at that age I was really more prime than what you would think you know I you, I, you know normally you think well you know 20 year olds at their prime but you mature and uh, if you stay at it by the time you're uh, uh, late 30s and 40s then you get really good uh, kind of like these, uh, some of these sports, these uh, tri triumphants or whatever, they, you know, they, they swim, they ride a bike, and they run, you know, as normally they're about 40, in the 40s, and they, they, their bodies mature and they're really getting going. So, uh, and then uh, I say in uh, 50, what, 52 when I moved to Central America, and then, boy, that was uh, another kind of bullies and that was uh, 
uh, bandits. And uh, now there was a lot of extortion. Uh, uh, you know, you pay or, you know, bad things are going to happen. There's a lot of that stuff going on down there. Guatemala, Mexico. <clears throat> and they get, those people are victimized bad down there. And so they really need to not only listen, but do the stuff that I talk about. And, uh, but I say, once you get start getting bullied, it just gets worse and more people do it. And then the bullies start bullying each other to try to get, uh, take advantage of you. So, so that's pretty funny. And then, uh, uh, like I say, so, uh, I never really thought anything about age. It never, never concerned me. And then I told you about, uh, what was it, three, I guess about three years now, uh, I was in uh, uh, Mexico, Mexico City, and I don't do cities too often. And uh, I was taking a subway, and then <clears throat> they uh, uh, pickpocketed me, and uh, there was like six of them. And uh, uh, the the first time I was pickpocketed twice. The first time. Uh, you know, they did it, and I, that was my ignorance. I, I, I allowed this thing to happen. It was funny because I didn't get pickpocketed till after I'm just getting ready to get off. And then uh, that's when I, I, I checked. I had everything. I got off, and right, I got off. I checked that they already got it. So right there. So that was, that was stupidity on my part. That's all of that stupid the next time. And so the next time is when I got into it with them. And then uh, it dawned on me, well, at, at that time, I didn't really want to, like I say, I, I struck, but I stopped after I struck. I didn't hospitalize anybody, and that was my, my objective, is to hospitalize them <clears throat> on stuff like that. But I didn't do it. And then, uh, because I thought, man, I wear a $300 phone, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hurt these people. You know, I mean, it's not like they pulled a weapon on me. And it's not bullying like uh, when you're bullied, they come at you emotionally. It wasn't like that. Like I say, they pickpocketed. And then, so then that's when I thought, you know, I'm getting old because, uh, you know, I've never, I don't have, I don't have pity on these people. And, uh, but as time went on, I figured out what happened. I'm an old guy. And so to these people, they're in their 20s. Now to them, this is an old guy that can't defend himself. And uh, so that's why they took advantage of me. And uh, uh, so but that was a different kind of thing. But uh, as I say, if they would have pulled weapons, oh man, I'd have had fun then. Uh, because as I say, uh, the thing is, to stop bullying. The one thing bullies, first, the first thing they do is they're, I'm, I'm the man. You listen to me because I'm special. Okay, that's the first thing. And then uh, the next thing, they'll have two or three or four, six, eight, ten, twenty other people with them because they know they don't have too much by themselves. So they need others to back them up. And then you have the ones that use a weapon. And uh, like the guy I shot here in Topeka, you know, you got a gun. Well, now I'm the man, I've got a gun. Okay, <laughs> you know, <laughs> these people need something to make them feel stronger because they're weak and uh you know and, it's, and weak is not physically uh it could be uh, physically too but that's not the thing and that's what i'm saying all of this all goes down to in your mind in your mind you have to have your mind set so it to handle a bully the first thing you have to realize, you have to be stronger in the mind than that chump is. 
<laughs> and then once you are stronger in the mind, then you, you've got a really good chance. The next thing is what makes you stronger in your mind is just like a boxer. A boxer goes in and he fights, what, you know, 10 rounds, what, uh, three minute rounds or something like that. You know how much they practice, how much they work out to get to that? I mean, they'll, they'll have the round, the fight over in the first minute. You know what I mean? So that means they've prepared. They've really prepared themselves and they've decided to really get after it. And then when the time came, they, they were, they were able to get after it. That's the second thing you have to do is you have to prepare your body, not just your mind, but your body. And it doesn't take that much. You got to remember, bullies are looking for wimps. You know, bullies don't want to come up against anybody that's strong. Some anybody with any kind of strength at all is not a good thing for a bully. They're looking for the weak. And the weak and the ones that are able, that are able to push and topple over because they're so weak. So then you, you uh, start or you start mentally. Then you have to take the physical actions. That's what I do. I'm working on, uh, I work with uh, weapons when I'm working out in the morning. And I work out without the weapons too. I mean, it just, the thing is, it's funny. People that use a weapon, when you take away their weapon, they don't have anything left. They don't have a plan B. They, they're used to using the weapon and anything, if they have to use something else, they, they're not ready. Because the weapons always worked until now. And, and that's, that's why uh, I practice with different kinds of weapons. And uh, I say, so I'm physically ready. I'm mentally ready and I'm physically ready. And then now, the only thing is left is, what do we talk about? Morals. You have to be morally ready. You have to morally understand they don't have the right to do that to you. And you have the moral obligation to stand strong. And when you do that, then that mental and that physical comes together and you will do what you have to do. Uh, you know, they, they say you don't pick on uh, people older than you. Well, there's a reason. Uh, I'm not as strong and as fast as I used to be, but um, I'd hate to meet me in a dark alley. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, in other words, uh, as we mature, especially in my case, you've gone, gone through enough of these bad situations that it's not, a, not really a bad situation, it's just a situation you work your way through it. You know, no big deal. And it's funny because I've got one grandkid that's a black belt in some kind of whatever or something. And the thing is, he's already mentally ready and physically he's ready. And on the school bus, uh, there was a guy trying to bully him and uh, he just, you know, he didn't act like a badass or nothing like that. He just told the guy, hey, you want to do it? We'll, we'll do it. We want to do it here in the bus? You want to go outside and do it? You know, what do you want to do? And then the guy backed off. So that's what I'm saying. They're not looking for, for problems. They're looking for wimps. So don't be a wimp. This is Mike. No stress, Mike. Dot com.